Hi, welcome to Kinder Service. I'm Shelley Stevenson. I'm Nick the Thick, and today we're going to be making some boats. Some cool orange boats. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I'm going to show you how to make these a little bit later on, and it will all become clear because it relates to the story, too. So I'm going to pop that just there for now, and we're going to pray to begin. Father God, thank you that you are here with us today. Send your Holy Spirit that we might feel your presence with us as we spend time learning about the story of Jesus today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So as you know, the first thing we always do after we pray is we ask God to forgive us. There might be stuff you've messed up at this week, stuff that hasn't worked out, maybe people you've upset. This is our chance to say sorry to God. And we, as we do that, we pretend to wash our hands because that way, just like we wash all the stuff off our hands, God washes all the bad stuff away from our hearts. Let's pray. Dear God, we're sorry for the things we've messed up at this week, for the times that we've hurt people, that we've forgotten to do or neglected to do stuff that we know we should have done, Lord. For the things we've done, that we know we shouldn't as well. God, for the time we've forgotten to remember that you are there and you are with us. Please, Lord, forgive us. Send your Holy Spirit to make us clean again. Thank you that you forgive us and we can start afresh today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. A Shelley is going to read us a story about a boat. Now, if you want to follow along in the book, it's in the Jesus Storybook Bible. Um, it is called The Captain of the Storm. Or you could look it up in the Bible. It's The Storm on the Lake from Mark 4 and Matthew 8. The sun was going down. The air was warm and still. Let's go out on the lake, Jesus said to his friends. Jesus had been helping people all day, and now he was tired. So they left the crowds at the shore and set out in a small fishing boat. Jesus climbed into the boat to take a nap. As soon as his head touched the pillow, he fell fast asleep. It was a beautiful evening. A gentle breeze rustled the sails. The friends were chatting happily as they headed out into the middle of the lake. Everything was perfect just right, nice, just right for a quiet night's sail. They're only about halfway across when out of nowhere, whirling winds swept across the lake, fierce and strong, like a hurricane. A blinding flash of lightning lit up the sky. Thunder roared right overhead. The storm blew the water into towering waves that hurled the little boat up, 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 and then sent it crashing down, down, down. The fishing boat was blown and buffeted and tossed and turned back and forth, up and down, left and right, round and round. And in the middle of the storm, Jesus just laid there sleeping. Now, Jesus' friends had been fishermen all their lives, but in all their years fishing on this lake, they had never once seen a storm like this. No matter how hard they struggled with the ropes and the sails, they couldn't control the boat. This storm was just too big for them. But the storm wasn't too big for Jesus. Help! They screamed. Wake up! Quick, Jesus! Jesus opened his eyes. Rescue us! Save us! They shrieked. Don't you care? Of course Jesus cared. And this was the very reason he had come. To rescue them and save them. Jesus stood up and spoke to the storm. Hush, he said. That's all. And the strangest thing happened. The wind and the waves recognized Jesus' voice. They'd heard it before, of course. It was the same voice that made them in the very beginning. 
They listened to Jesus and they did what he said. Immediately, the wind stopped. The water calmed down. It glittered innocently in the moonlight and leapt quietly up against the side of the boat as if nothing had happened. The little boat bobbed gently up and down. There was a deep stillness and a great quiet all around. Then Jesus turned to his wind-torn friends. Why were you scared? He asked. Did you forget who I am? Did you believe your fears instead of me? Jesus' friends were quiet, as quiet as the wind and the waves. And into their hearts came a different kind of storm. What kind of man is this? They asked themselves anxiously. Even the wind and the waves obeyed him, they said, because they didn't understand. They didn't realize yet that Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus' friends had been so afraid they could only see the big waves. They had forgotten that if Jesus was with them, then they had nothing to be afraid of. No matter how small their boat or how big the storm. So, a big storm in a little boat. It must have been really scary for Jesus' friends. Can you imagine waves towering high above you? You're not seeing an end. But they concentrated so much on the storm that they forgot that Jesus was with them. It can be a bit like that sometimes when we're afraid of things in life. I don't know what you're afraid of at the moment or the big things that seem to be overwhelming for you at the moment. But we can forget sometimes that God is with us through all of it. God is there. We can talk to him. We can say, help us in the midst of this storm. He may choose like Jesus to calm the storm, to get rid of the fear. Or he may simply promise to be alongside us, to make sure that we're not alone when things seem dark and scary. You see, God loves you and he cares for you. And no matter what happens around you, you can know that he will be there alongside you, just whatever life throws at you. And you can ask to know that he's there. You can ask for his help when you're scared. And he promises to love you and be with you and care for you, regardless of what happens around you. So to help us remember that, we're going to head downstairs and learn how to make one of these. I'm going to help you make one of these wonderful little boats here. What you're going to need, you're going to need an orange, uh, a sharp knife, and an adult to help you use that, then just a regular knife and a teaspoon. Then you're also going to need, I've got a, a skewer here, a wooden skewer, you can use a cocktail stick, that works just as well, some scissors, a tiny piece of card, a pen if you want to color that in, and a little bit of tape. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get an adult to help you, and you want to cut your orange in half. Now you want to cut it around the equator. Okay, so you've got your two ends, uh, one where it would be connected to the tree, and the other where the flower would have been. So you can see that there, and you want to cut around this way. So you put your knife on there and just let the knife do the work. Nice sharp knife if you can. Make sure you get an out to help you with this. Uh, and you can make two boats out of one orange. So let's put one piece to the side. Now, then what you need to do is you need to get a regular knife. And you're gonna put your knife in between the juicy flesh part that you're gonna eat and the white pithy stuff that you don't wanna eat. And what you're gonna do, you're just gonna slip it in there and then using the cut 
the, the blade of the knife ever so gently. It's going to be juicy, so make sure you stay over your bowl or your plate. And what's going to happen is we're going to cut all the flesh out. This might be how you eat a grapefruit. If you've ever had a grapefruit for breakfast, this is how you, you do that as well. So just cut steady as you go. Like I said, you're going to get very juicy. That's okay. You can drink the juice afterwards and you can eat the bit of orange afterwards too. And just slip it all the way underneath. If you need, and you might just be able to, we don't even need our spoon for that bit. And then you've got your piece of orange out. You can eat that in a little bit. Now, tip your juice out. And then any of the little bits of flesh that are left in there, if you just use your spoon to gently scrape those out. You don't need to get it all out. But obviously the lighter your boat is, the easier it will float. Okay. Now, next thing you want to do, you've got the majority of your flesh out there. You're going to get a bit of paper towel and dry it off. There's no water, and so just pack a bit of paper towel in the middle there and absorb all the moisture. There we go. That's great. Dry it around the outside. All right, and we can pop that over to one side. You might want to wipe your fingers as well. Okay, so you've got your little boat, which is awesome. Then you want to get, if you've got a cocktail stick, that would probably work best. If not, um, you can use one of these skewers that you might use for a barbecue, and you want to cut off about seven or eight centimeters of that. Uh, it's not going to cut with the scissors. Let me just break that off. Okay, and that's going to be your flag for the top, the flag pole. Then if you get a little piece of paper, and if you color it in, let me just show you that better. You color it in. Don't worry too much about, we're gonna cut it out afterwards. So just make sure you get up to one edge because we're gonna make a triangle. Make sure you get up to that edge again. We're gonna turn it over. Okay. There we go. And then what we're gonna do, our cat back on our pen. Using some scissors, we're going to cut a triangle flag. This is going to be our green boat. Okay, and then you're going to attach your flagpole to your flag. So if you get a piece of tape that's kind of double the length of your flag, what you do if you put your piece of tape over your flag like that and then line up the piece of tape with the flag pole wrap it around then you get your flag and your flag pole and you can trim off the excess bits of tape there so that it, again less weight and then it's dead simple what you're going to do Gently pop your flagpole in there. Now you don't want to push it all the way through, otherwise you'll end up with a big hole in the bottom of your boat and uh, that won't work very well. So you've got a, a white one and a green one ready to race. Now, I've got some water here in a bowl and we can see how they do. There we go. And you see there's quite a bit of height here between uh, the top of the orange in the water so they shouldn't sink. Now you can try them in the bath, you try them in the sink. But what would be really fun is if you pop them in a stream and you could race them and see if the green one could be the white one or whatever you color you decide. You could make designs on your flags, whatever. But just uh, right, and there we go. That's how you make boats. So what's really cool about these boats is because they're made out of orange peels, there's nothing really bad in them. And you can go play in the streams and you can race them there and know that it can't hurt the environment. Yeah. So I think that that's very cool. You still don't want to leave it in the stream if you can possibly yeah. help it, but there's nothing bad on it. And you can see who gets, who has the fastest boat. So we're gonna go and race this afternoon, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so it's time to pray. It's time to pray, so um, we don't have any scraps left over from the craft. 
You can't write on an orange, can you? No, very no, not so good. So we're going to use post-its. Now, if you remember that we have a prayer board, um, our fridge is our prayer board right now, and there's four different sections of things that you can pray about. Um, wow, God, sorry, thank you, God, and please. So wow, God, for the stuff that God does that's amazing, like spring, amazing. Sorry for the things you're sorry for and that you won't do again or you'll try not to do again. And then thank you for the things God has done. He's answered prayers for you and please for the things you wanna ask. So let's just take a moment and write down on a sticky note so that you can put it on your fridge so you can remember to pray during the week. So just take a moment to, to say a word, write down a word, draw a picture, or just put something there to remember to pray. Okay, I'm gonna say thank you for my dad. My dad was in hospital and now he's out and he's doing so much better. So let's pray. Lord God, thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for how much you care for us. You make an amazing world. Forgive us for the things that we've done wrong. And please hear all of these prayers that we lift up to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest among you and all those whom you love this day and evermore. Amen. So we're offered to race our boats in the stream. Uh, send us some pictures of your boats. You don't have to use oranges you could use lemons or limes or i guess you could haul out any kind of fruit with this kind of scale. grapefruit even Ooh, it's a bigger boat that's or, a battleship <laughs> or a watermelon even wow can we try that shelly <laughs> <laughs> just wants to eat the watermelon yeah <laughs> so bless you have a great rest of your week uh, we'll be back tonight with night prayer and we'll be back again next week with another kinder service god bless bye bye